Dr. Raj Nehru, the guru of sex from Trinidad. Do you as an individual, whether you be male or female, adult of course, understand everything about sex? I'm sure you don't, neither do I, and I'm a sexologist. I've been studying sex for over 40 years. I've done intense studies and research when it comes to sex, sexuality, sexual behavior, even trying to understand the female form and how they think. We know how men think. We are hunters and gatherers. We are visually stimulated. We, on a moment's notice, we can have sex. Women are not equipped that way. They're not. But I'll tell you some secrets. This is part one. For women, when they see a guy that they like, they already know if that guy could get sex from them. They already know that. For a man, he sees a woman that he like, he would like to have sex with that woman. But does the woman want to have sex with you? Ask yourself that question. And if she wants to have sex with you, she is going to make it difficult. Because she already knew you can have sex with her. She likes you. But she's not going to have any, she's not going to have any outward signs of it. The man on the other hand, he already knows that he wants to go to bed with this woman. So he will try everything in his books to woo the woman into bed. He will try to impress upon her. He's a certain way. Whether he's telling lies or what not, to do that, and that a lot of men do that also, just to get that woman in bed because it's a conquest for him. With women, it's not a conquest. With women, it's a chemistry. It's emotions, it's a feelings. So for them, it's something deeper. For men, it's superficial. And it's the slam bam, thank you mom syndrome with the man, with the woman is, hey, let me see if this guy is willing to have, do the things, to have me, to get me. So it's a game we all play, whether we like to or not. In our subconscious mind, we know, we know what we want, we know what we want to do. But it's all a game to try to see what we can get out of it. And it's something we have to be accepting of. But many a times we are not, simply because we are not willing to do the things we have to do to get what we want. But when we do, when we are willing to do those things, we put our best foot forward. We try our best to bamboozle one another. And it's all part of the game. But once you understand there is a game factor, you'll understand what's coming next. End of part one. Part two. Men and women playing the game for sex. There's so many things we do. A man would go all out. Romance will tell you all the wonderful, beautiful things you want to hear. He'll promise you the moon and the sky. But as long as he gets that sex, he doesn't want to have anything to do with you. Because most men after sex, they turn away from you. And you'll know that if you're sleeping with somebody, you'll know after the person has sex, he will turn his back to you and he wants to go to sleep. Most men, when they have had that conquest, what do they do? They want to move on to the next one. They may have some feelings for you, so there's no immediate rejection. But it's a standoffish kind of thing because they've already got more they want. And that's, the, that's, the, that's human nature. The woman, on the other hand, may become attached to you because the emotion has grown and she feels more entrenched in the relationship and she's looking forward to a long-lasting relationship with you. But the man is not looking forward to that. Unless, of course, a man is genuine and he loves someone and he's willing to do the things to build a relationship and make things better. And of course, eventually spend time with that person, even if there's sex or no sex. So that's the difference. There's a big difference when it comes to those things and how you play that game. And again, I said it's a game because of course you're conjuring up things in your mind. You're working towards a goal and that goal is the person. And you're willing to do things in a particular way to woo that person, to get that person to like you, to have that person only think about you. And we do know about that. Because when you're in love, you think about the person all the time. You know how you feel in your heart, your stomach. 
the butterflies you get in your stomach when you're close to that person, how many men want to do that? Is it a game for the sexual pleasure or is it a long-term game where this is somebody that I want to develop a relationship with for the long term? So it all depends on what you're looking for. If you want to find that right partner, where do you go to look for that right partner? What do you do to get that right partner? All these little factors are important because you as a woman also has to understand the game that he's on, what he's doing. And you have to understand your game and your game plan because whatever you're doing, you must understand what you're doing and how you're doing it and why you're doing it. There are women now who are in the game just as much as men, but it is not innate in them. End of part two. Part three. What do you do? Is it a game for you as a female? Or oh, the guy we know is a game for the guy. He's a hunter. He's a gatherer. The woman, she's attached to her emotions. And she wants things done in a particular way. She wants the romance and all the other things. All the fine trappings that goes with it. But... She is willing to play the game to an extent to see how much love there is in that relationship and what it takes for that person to win her heart. We don't care about winning hearts, but we will try to fool most of the times. Not all the times, eh? so don't think all men are like that. But it is a game. One of the things that we as men fail to understand is that we play on the emotions of women. And playing on the emotions of women could be detrimental to your own health. It could be something that is negative to you because of that game that you're playing and that your willingness to lie and deceive. Do you want to lie and deceive simply to get somebody to go to bed with you? Some guys will tell you, yes, they don't care what they have to do as long as they could get that woman to spread her legs. The woman, on the other hand, they are not the ones who are trying to create an impression. They already know that they are the prize. So they are willing to sit back and see as much as you can do for them. What are you bringing to the table? But ask yourself the question, what is the woman bringing to the table? Is it her physical beauty? Is it her intelligence? her personality, what is she bringing to the table? Because we are expected as men to provide certain things in a particular way. And the woman is just expected to be a woman. So you see, sometimes we don't raise the bar high enough. Sometimes we don't do the things that we are supposed to do. Sometimes we are only interested in the physical activity as opposed to emotional and psychological aspect of it. And if those are the things that you're doing well, everybody has their way of, they have their game plan, you know, everybody has that. I'm not telling you whether it's right or wrong for you. If you have a conscience or if you don't have a conscience, it all depends. But I do know that when you start playing with person's emotions, it's going to affect you in some way. You see, karma has a way of getting to you. And you have to be honest in the things that you do. Some people don't believe in it. They don't believe in honesty. They don't believe in karma. They don't care what happened. They just want to get what they're supposed to get. End of part three. Part four. We start romancing, doing all the things. But what is our end game? What do you want out of that relationship? Is it simply to get that person to go to bed with you or something deeper and more profound. And of course, somewhere along the line, you might fall in love with somebody at first sight. And that do happen to a lot of men and that do happen to a lot of women. And how do you project yourself? How do you sell yourself to that person? Because it's a, it's, it's a, it's a game, it's a, it's, a, it's a transaction. You're trying to sell yourself who you are, right? All the things that you're bringing to the table, you're trying to sell that to the opposite sex, to the other person. And if it's not only a physical attraction and it's something much deeper, 
you have to be a person who has to understand how there's a spirituality to that also. There's a spiritual connection as much as there's a chemical connection with the person. There's chemistry between you and the person. There's a smile, there's a wink eye, there's all these little things that comes with it. There's a shyness, there's a nervousness that comes with it. And that's where you start building that relationship. Building that relationship on truth and trust. That is something that you must be able to do. Because if you, build, if you start building a relationship on lies, the relationship is not going to last. If you don't trust the person, it's not going to last. If you don't know how to communicate, how to have that conversation, how to be able to compromise with the person, because from early in the gates you have to learn to compromise with your partner, because it's no longer I'm the man and I'm boss over you, that caveman attitude has to go. So you have to be willing to compromise. And in compromising, you'll find that things will move much smoothly for both of you. You'll have a much better relationship. There are things that you're going to enjoy more with one another. So, understanding this, understanding how you operate, what you want out of the relationship, the sacrifices that you have to make, the things that you're willing to do. When we are now in love, we'll travel any distance to see the person. We'll buy all the things that the person likes. Do you still do that? Do you still try to make your spouse smile? He or she, is there a jovial moment, happiness in your relationship? All those things should come to the forefront because happiness is an integral part of your relationship. We all strive for happiness. We all want to be happy. And if your partner gives you that happiness and that smile, that's what you want. End of part four. Part five. So here we are talking about developing that relationship and honesty in the relationship and building that to the point where you want to spend the rest of your life with that person. Now, if it was something that is strictly physical, you get the physical act out of the way and you move on. And many of us have done that. Many men have done that. Women have done it also, but more so men. And once they get the physical part out of the way, there's nothing else. There's no other attachment. Because it was never real in the first place. It was Maya. It was something that, it was an illusion. But once there is that connectivity, once there's that compromise between you and the person, and that communication between you and the person, and the development of the relationship, things are much better now. You will find that you bring joy and happiness to one another. You like the company of the person you like to be in the same setting with the individual because you know when you are in that person's environment, the aura and the love that you feel for the person and you feel from them, it's second to none. The beauty of it, that beauty is second to none. That love, that feeling. But of course, there are some times that that feeling could diminish. The love could lessen or it could grow depending on what you do with the relationship. So how much are you investing in that relationship? It's an, and of course, it's an investment for the, for the rest of your life. It's what you put into it. It's, that's what you're going to get out of it. So you must understand these little things about relationship. Like I said, we're not all experts. I'm still learning. I'm still trying to help others. I'm still trying to allow you to understand these things. But at the end of the day, a relationship, there's many aspects to it. There are many facets to it. And you must be able to provide all these little things to make it work and grow. And that's very important for the development of the relationship overall, over time. So it's not only the physical act, it's not only the sex. It's other things. It's the way you appreciate the person, appreciate what he or she has done for you, for the relationship and other things. Even if they can't do a lot of material things, you know the feeling that you have in the heart for the individual. But I'll tell you something. You must always be there to uplift the other person. Upliftment of the other person is as important as falling in love. 
because you should not pull down the other person. You should always be there to make sure that person is uplifted at all times. End of part five. The end.